throwback. What's up dogs, it's Cameron with Venus Theory and today we are here to take a little bit of a step back to my very first YouTube video ever which was talking about sign compression bases and how I make them and lately I've started using these again and figured might as well just kind of show how I do it again because these bass sounds are really really cool. Um, a couple things before we get started, all you're going to need is a synth that has a sine wave oscillator and white noise and pretty much any synth should have that. Uh, the important parts, you will need some kind of notch filter or other filtering plug-in to make filter movements, and some kind of compressor that is capable of soft clipping, or a soft clipping VST, anything like that will do. So let's dive in and get started. Alright, so I figured this would be something fun to do today because I've already filmed a bunch of tutorials and I kind of just wanted to do something else and figured that you guys may enjoy this. So I wanted to revisit my first YouTube video ever, which was doing sign compression bases. And I wanted to revisit this today and just do it again because people ask about it every once in a while and I figured it's time for an updated video. So um, I, I've been experimenting with these types of bases a little bit and I found a kind of cool way to make them using Retrolog. So we're going to set this to a sine wave, drop this an octave, make sure it's mono, maybe give it a bit of glide, but we're going to be resampling it. So kind of just depends. Um, I might write the bass line out with the track and then start the resampling phase, or I might just uh, do one long note and then resample that a bunch, which is what we're going to do today. So what I like to do now is use white noise at zero and just very slowly work it in. So usually about 1%. From here, I'm just going to up the filter distortion to maybe 40-50%. And now we're already starting to get somewhere because this is really the only way I could figure out to kind of emulate what I would do in Ableton with Erosion. Next up, we're going to need a bunch of saturation stuff. So we're going to go to Distortion and get Magneto and DawTube. I'm going to increase DawTube. About there, increase the saturation from Magneto. And now it's a matter of squishing the sound together so that noise kind of follows what the bass is doing. So for that, we're going to grab some kind of dynamics. So we're going to do tube compressor because I really like that one. Had a bit of driving character. Starting to get there. And now we're going to use Waves H Comp, which I highly recommend that compressor because it does things compression wise very well and just sounds pretty good. And I'm just going to crank the output to smash this sound to oblivion. From here, we're probably going to need to turn this down because we're going to add a few more things before we get started resampling just to see what happens. So after this, uh, kilohertz distortion on saturate, I'm going to set this down to minus 6.02 and just increase it till I feel I'm comfortable with it. So right about there seems to be good. So we're going to add an audio track here for resampling and then we're going to add a group track. This is going to be our through. And now we're going to resample this a bunch of times and it's going to sound cool. So let's go ahead and just make a note. We're going to do F. Cool. And we're just going to make sure this fits. Alrighty. Now we just need to route a couple things. So we're going to set the output of this to go to the through, the input of the audio track from the through. Then we're going to record this sound, and we should be about ready to start partying. Cool. So we can go ahead and mute Retrolog, we're not going to need it, and now we can start the resampling phase. So why I kind of wanted to make this video was just to talk about resampling, and again, sign compression because I haven't done it in a while, but resampling I get asked about quite a bit. So resampling is a matter of just doing a bunch of stuff and making things happen, and doing it a bunch of times because it's a little easier to go about it this way. So we're going to go ahead and write some automation here. Cool. And then we'll probably grab some kind of compressor just to squish things back together. Cool. And we'll go ahead and add another filter and write automation for this as well. Perfect. So now we're going to disable the second one and start working on this first one. We can disable the right because we're going to go in, turn off our snap and do this all by hand. And what I'm really just trying to do is make this bass move around a bunch. So we're just gonna kinda listen and go through it and find what sounds good. Cool, we 
can enable our other filter here and do some different movements with this one. Cool. We could probably add a little bit of distortion of some kind. Uh, I think we'll probably go for quadrifuzz because that always sounds cool. Put that before the compressor. So this is just multiband distortion, nothing too fancy. Cool. Let's go ahead and set up another audio track, and then we just need to change our routing. So now this is gonna go, we need to disable that. So through and through, and now we're gonna record it again. So we'll snap this over to the beat, and that way we get a bit of a tail on it, and we can start working with it again. Sweet. So we'll go ahead and mute that. We'll go ahead and get some new filters and stuff open here. So I think I wanna do a comb filter. Uh, we'll go ahead and do another notch filter. Maybe we could mess with a formant filter as well. That might be kind of fun. Let's see. So, probably not this early on, but could be fun. So, we're going to go ahead and just enable these to write and just go ahead and do some quick movements so we can see the lanes. Perfect. So we'll disable right, uh, I think, what is this? This is the comb filter, so we're gonna disable that for now and work with our notch filter and just kind of accent the movements as best we can. So maybe we could cut out the low end here at the start and kind of suck out some mids and then go up. Right, that should sound kind of cool. We'll enable our comb filter and do something with that. And then we're going to listen back and see if anything sounds weird. So going too low does get a bit nasty, so we're going to up that a little bit. And just mix this in. more distortion and maybe some EQ. Cool, we'll bounce this out and do one more round and see how it sounds. So we just need to add another audio track and do the routing. Through and through, all right. Then we're gonna set this to the beat. And this is just gonna make it easier so once I'm done, I can just kind of chop this sound up and maybe load it into contact or whatever I wanna use it in. So we'll go ahead and record that. Neat. So that should be a really heavy sound and you know, if we maybe like reverse this and use this as the sample. You know, so many things you can do with these types of basses. So we're going to do one more round of doing stuff here. So I think we're going to do a distortion. We'll do, uh, let's do something different. 
let's use snap heap and do something in parallel. So we'll do a filter, a filter, and then a faturator. So we'll turn that off for right now and turn this off. And let's go ahead and figure out what the distortion is going to do. Okay. So I want to do a notch filter and a band pass, maybe. See how that sounds. So we're going to move these to be in parallel and turn this on. All right. And if we move the band pass, not really sounding like a whole lot. So what if we did that? And just mix this in a little more gently. So yeah, maybe not the greatest idea in the world, but kind of cool. So I think maybe what we could do is like a phaser and we could set the depth and rate to something very low. Okay, so that could be cool. We'll do probably two more filters. So we'll do filter, copy, filter, and we want this to be a notch. We want this one to be a notch. And then we can start writing automation for all of these and see how it sounds. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and do stuff with things and see where we end up. So I do want to disable the phaser for right now. I want to get the filter movements right first. So this is insert four, so I want to work with three first. And disable this grid snap and just kind of find some different movements that might be cool. So I want this to kind of move around this little bit here. Then go down very, very quickly. Up and down. Just to create some kind of weird noises. And down. Cool. Now we're going to do this one. So we're just going to try and make something a little different. Not really anything specific. We'll just kind of adjust it as we go. Now we could do our phaser, uh, just adjusting cutoffs. So we'll probably start low, high, back down, back up, back down. Just something kind of gentle. Maybe adjust the mix. Maybe another very light DAW tube on the end. And just some final EQ. Neat. Okay. So I think that's sounding cool. And just for the sake of curiosity, we will bounce this out one more time, run this into a sampler track, and see if we ended up with an actual bass that we could use. So we'll do through and through, and record it one last time. Whoops. Okay, well, that's fine. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab sampler track. We'll call this bass. 
We're going to grab this last one, drop it in, move the sample start to right around there, and maybe adjust the amplitude envelope so it doesn't kick in super hard. Cool. And we know this was F, so we're going to move this down to F2. Sweet. We could maybe add some filters, so we'll do like bandpass, which is always good. Actually, let's do band 12, band reject, and we can move that around, add a bit of filter drive. That sounds good. All right, and let's see. Let's reverse it, why not? What do we end up with? So in reverse, it's a bit whippy, but this might sound cool. That's pretty neat. Uh, what if we did just like a low pass? Sweet. Band pass. Uh, let's probably go ahead and make this monophonic. So that's pretty dope, and that was a look at sign compression because I just wanted to do that, and I hope you guys found this interesting and maybe helpful, but one last thing I wanted to point out that's cool about doing things this way um, is say that this end result didn't quite turn out good or you realize maybe at like step three you were like oh i put in too much white noise or whatever this is a great way to keep everything open so we could go back to this initial patch and maybe zero out the noise and re-record it all and see what happens and you know maybe change this to a triangle with some pink noise instead and just see what happens that way so anyways that will do it for this video and that's it for this video guys so thanks for watching and i hope you learned something as always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.